Hey guys, thanks again for tuning in to another episode of Rio's how-to video series. I'm Russell Miller with Rio Products, and today I'm going to show you how to fish an indicator rig on the river. To start, we're going to take a quick look at the tackle. I've got my Sage X 9 foot 5 weight along with a 4250 reel. I really like this reel because I can dial in the drag depending on my fish size and the tippet size I'll be fishing. That way I don't have unnecessary break-offs. Spooled up on there, I've got my extreme indicator line. This line is really fabulous for the kind of fishing that I'm going to be doing today. Uh, at a 49 foot head, it's got a lot of weight up front and it easily turns over the big indi indicator rigs. Indicator, split shot, two flies, I can control that with a nice wide open loop. We do have another option, depending on what kind of fishing you're going to be doing, called the trout and steelhead indicator line. This line's really great if you need to be running really, really long drifts down a seam. Guys on the Trinity River really, really like this line for that reason. It's a 70 foot head, very different profile than what we're going to be doing with the extreme indicator. Again, I prefer the extreme indicator for the fishing you'll see today. Off of the fly line, we've got our PowerFlex Plus leader material, followed by a tippet ring. I really, really like the tippet rings, and you'll see how I put this whole rig together. And then I have my FloraFlex Plus tippet material, and I've got it in 7X through 3X, again, depending on fly size and fish size that I'll be fishing. So I'm going to show you a little bit how this all goes together on the rig, and then we're going to take it down to the river and put it into use, and hopefully find a few fish doing it. So before I step into the run and start fishing, I just wanted to explain to you my setup, because I think that's really important. It's a different setup than you'd fish a dry fly with, or a dry dropper even, right? We're talking about indicator fishing here specifically. So with our extreme indicator, we've got this nice high-vis orange section, which gives us a really good indication of what our line and indicator is doing um, in that final few feet, which is really critical. In addition to that, it features Rio's max float tip, which floats much higher than the rest of the line, which allows us to really do accurate small mends. I've looped on my uh, PowerFlex Plus leader and I've chopped it off a little bit. This serves as a really nice butt section for me to slide my indicator up and down on without damaging the material. So I mentioned I have a tippet ring on here and the purpose of that is uh, I can run now level tippet 90 degrees off of that, that butt section that I've got up higher. And what that does is it cuts through the water a little bit better, allows my flies to access the bottom, but also move gently within the current and really simulate uh, what the bugs are doing underneath the water. From there, I've got a little bit of um, roll-on putty to take my flies down and an unweighted pheasant tail nymph uh, to fish. Again, you can fish two flies here. For ease of sake, I'm just going to fish one. Um, so I'm going to turn around and begin fishing the wonderful looking scene behind me. My first cast I'll fire in here. I'm just going to get a feel for how the run is acting. It's going to be shallow, see if there's any fish in close to me. The way I typically set up my indicator is to set it one and a half times the depth of the water, right? So if I'm going to fish knee deep water, I'm essentially going to be up to my waist as far as depth goes. And that's why it's really important to have everything line, land in a straight line. So we want our fly split shot indicator to all land in a straight line. And as we're fishing it downstream, we're going to mend all the way to the indicator to ensure a good drag free drift to let that fly really flutter like it wants to. I'm going to throw it out there again, throw a nice little mend in right at the beginning just to help ease up some of that slack we're seeing to throw another mend, feed a little bit of line downstream. So I'm going to make another cast up there into that, work a little bit different seam, let my flies get down a little bit deeper. So as the indicator comes back towards me, I'm stripping in line just like I would dry fly fishing. And now that it's right next to me, I'm going to feed some line out there, let it find the bottom again. And the other thing we want to do as we're fishing this, it helps to keep a nice high rod tip. Keep as much of that line off the water as possible. And you can really minimize the amount of mending you have to do just based on how, how much you're raising your arm. And I'm looking for any indication in the indicator that something is happening underneath. A lot of times it might be really, really obvious and that indicator might just get ripped underneath. Sometimes that indicator will just kind of stop and sometimes the indicator will just dimple downstream a little bit. Whatever it does, you want to set the hook on it, right? These fish suck in a fly with water and spit it out really, really quickly. 
and you can see how quickly this is moving in here. So when we set the hook, we always want to set the hook and drive it downstream, right? The fish are sitting upriver, we want to pull that hook right back into their mouth. So a good downstream pop is the way to do that. So as I'm working this through here, I'm really trying to focus on the subtle seams. And you can spend a lot of time working in a piece of water, really understanding all of the little subtleties that exist there and putting flies through them. There's a nice fish. That was my fourth or fifth cast through that spot, and I just threw a little extra mend in there to try to get a little extra depth. And uh, my fly found a fish, which is great. We like that. Nice rainbow that decided to eat that little pheasant tail nymph. Again, getting good at fishing underneath the water allows you to fish through the hatches, right? You're not just focused on getting them on dry flies, but you can wait for the hatch to come off and still find success throughout the day. Thanks for tuning in to this Rio how-to video, and I hope you learned a few things.